can already see it from a mile away. It's small. It's on the horizon like an island out at sea, but we're getting closer to it, and you're going to see a lot of it here in the coming days. Folks are going to jump all over this conversation and say, is there a quarterback controversy in Austin, Texas? Is there a chance that Arch Manning overtakes Quinn Ewers and he ends up being the guy? And I'm here to tell you there is not a quarterback battle going on in Austin. We'll talk about that right now, but make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JD Piquel. I want to hear your thoughts on this whole discussion uh, because we're about to give you ours here right now. We get accused a fair amount, um, as anyone in this you know YouTube industry does, of being in it for clicks or being about clickbait or whatever. Um, and I'm here to tell you, if that were the case, I would sit here right now in front of this camera and tell you, hey, quarterback battle. Queen Ewers, Arch Manning. It's going to be awesome. We'll talk about all of it. Make sure you're tuned in. Like I, I would do that, and we'd have a thumbnail that says QB controversy, question mark, and all those things, and we're, we very clearly are not doing that. I'm here to tell you the exact opposite. It is a Queen Ewers football team. Now, Arch Manning is at the table here, balled out yesterday in that spring game, man. If you are a Texas Longhorn fan, it is hard not to get excited about the Arch Manning era whenever that arrives. Not only did he throw some bombs for touchdowns and you had everybody and their mama saying, well, it was a busted coverage. I can make that throw. And that's fine. People are going to say what they want to say. But I was impressed by how he ran the offense. It wasn't just a thing where he had a couple of nice throws and then the rest of the afternoon he was trash. Like he had some real pocket presence. He operated the offense during that two-minute drill where they got down at the end of the half and had a field goal. Like he was, he was precise. He was in control of that Ferrari, man. There's no way around it. And so you saw the benefit of him having that redshirt year, learning from a Quinn Ewers, being able to get acclimated to college life, lose the idea a few times. We found it. We got it back. Cool. We're figuring out how to go to class and all these things. Like that's a benefit to Arch Manning. That's phenomenal. He gets this growth and gets this process to grow some more. And Quinn Ewers coming back did not deter Arch Manning. Arch Manning's not going to jump in the portal. He signed up to play for Steve Sarkeesian to be in the best position possible when it came time for him to be drafted to the NFL, right? Period, mic drop, the end. That's it. He didn't go to Texas, so he had a chance to play earlier. He didn't go to Texas, so he would start as a true freshman. Like, he came to Texas for development. That's why he came there. The reasons he came to Texas are still intact with Steve Sarkeesian being in charge of that whole program. So what I want to make sure we say here as a, as a show that covers – college football in general, experience in this sport is impossible to account for. You can't earn it any other way than playing in football games. And Michigan, I think, proved that in a very real way last season with all the experience they had coming back and won the national championship. As good as Arch Manning is, as good as I think Arch Manning is going to be, I think the whole last name and if he wasn't the Manning, he would be a three-star. I think that whole discussion got... A lot of air taken out of it yesterday. As good as I think he's going to be, Quinn Ewers has proven who he is. And if you're living on the Twitter sphere and just living off of snapshots, you saw Quinn Ewers throw the pick six, and then you saw Arch Manning throwing darts for touchdowns. And, of course, people are going to run with this thought of, well, there's a quarterback battle because it's good for clicks, it's good for engagement, it's good for all those things. But I'm telling you right now, Quinn Ewers has shown you who he is. His resume of last year has shown you who he is. Threw for almost 3,500 yards. Let him to a Big 12 championship. Let him to a college football playoff berth. Let him pass Alabama in Tuscaloosa by 10 points. Like, that matters. That matters. And going back to what I said, his resume and all the experience, that's going to make him, I believe, have a chance to make him even better in 2024 as they move into the SEC. If you throw Arch Manning out there as QB1 for you, yes, he'd, he'd have a lot of potential, a lot of talent, but he'd also have a lot of growing pains. If you're a Texas fan, you've already gone through those growing pains with Quinn Ewers. It happened in an 8-4 and four season. This Texas team does not aspire to go 8-4. and four. They aspire to win the national championship. And so whether they do that or not remains to be seen, but I'm telling you, Quinn Ewers gives you the best chance to do that. I also think it's worth noting, if you were to throw Arch Manning in there in the SEC, I don't know if you're setting him up for success. And this is coming from a guy who's telling you, I think Arch Manning was properly rated. I don't think that him being rated as highly as he was was some sort of accident or due to his last name. Dude could throw the football. Dude's going to be a really good college quarterback, I believe. But his first year in the SEC as a true sophomore, could he do it? Probably. Could he do it at the level that Quinn Ewers can with all the experience he has? 
I have a harder time getting behind that. You also, to be fair, don't ever know how it's going to impact a locker room. And now I'm sort of throwing darts at a board with the ripple effect here. So just take it with a grain of salt. I think Quinn Ewers is a leader in that locker room. I think Arch Manning's probably also a leader in that locker room to his own right. But if you were to take Quinn Ewers out of the driver's seat as the quarterback, I don't know what that does to a team. And again, I'm, I'm sort of trying to tread lightly here just because I don't want to speak about things I don't know 100% about because I'm not in that Texas locker room. But I can say this. When we were on the field last year, as Texas beat Alabama, and Quinn Ewers walked off that field with the game ball, the way he interacted with his teammates, there was, there was no question about who was the guy for Texas. There was no question around who they rallied around. And I'm not saying it was specifically him. I'm not saying they wouldn't do that around Arch Manning, but I think the continuity of having someone you've gone to war with, having someone that you've seen in the battle and have success that way, I think there's some confidence that that inspires. So this is not me, on the other hand, saying Arch Manning doesn't bring you that. I'm just saying the fact that Quinn Ewers has that without a shadow of a doubt is valuable and should be accounted for as you hear people throw wild things out there and say, hey, it's going to be a quarterback battle. It's not. The thing here, again, Arch Manning, I promise you, he's cool with that. Arch Manning and Manning Camp, they see the long game here. They weren't just coming to Texas for one year and, and, and hoping that after that he'd be able to play. Like That was never the mission. That was never the goal. The goal was get developed by Steve Sarkeesian. That's still happening. Arch Manning's going to be really good when it's his time. I might even tell you Arch Manning won't have a, a, a role this year. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he's not going to be QB1 for you, and that's more than okay, and I think that's best for all parties involved. So let me know how you all feel about this. If you feel differently, totally within your right to have an opinion. I'm excited to talk about it with you. Hit me on Instagram and on Twitter at JD Piquel, and make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Because I have a funny feeling uh, this won't be the last time we talk about this situation and the uh, the current outlook out there in Austin and their aspirations for moving to the SEC. So make sure you're locked in here. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Subscribe on your way out. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.